Spoken Word, half an hour of poetry and performance, your connection to Melbourne's grassroots poetry scene, the voice of those of us who have nothing but our voices. You are on Community Radio 3CR. This is the Spoken Word Program, and I am George O'Hara. And today we have a live recording from Open Studio with the poetry night, Girls on Key. There are a few different poets today, so let's get straight into it. The Lift Home You had me at that glance. Chasms clear of words. Speaking the holy language with your salivating eyes across the stick shift. Those ristretto shots smouldering in your sockets told me, hope at all costs, costs in some equal and opposite way as we are not, and pondered the expiry of unspent forgiveness. Before their brambles blinked back into berries, those tattletale eyes even staged a skit I'll shout, said the billionaire to the beggar in the bar, then the alley. I've got enough friends, but baby, there's still room in my dessert stomach. That was Bronwyn Manger, and now Felice Millay. This one's for my daughter. My daughter, carry me with you when I'm gone. And not just me, but the long line of women whose wisdom made you, whose mistakes made you, whose silenced voices sung your song so we could be beckoned from the stars. Carry us, carry us in your heart, in your head, in your eyes. Carry us in your thighs with the power to walk head high, with the power to walk towards and not run from, with the power to walk, not run. Except, of course, in those moments when running is your drive, spirit soaring, wild wind whipping in your hair. Your hair is deep fire. Carry us in your hair. Carry your culture in your hair. Carry your culture in more than just your hair. For there will be days when you will be shamed on the color of your skin, on the country of your kin. For the blood in your veins, you will be shamed on others' mistakes. Stained with the dark side of what it is to be white. And that's all right. We must know of this to grow from this. Understand a path to recarve a future. But my daughter, remember that that was their ignorance, not yours. You, my daughter, my love, you're not monochrome. Your skin carries the subtle colors of the past. Your blood is rich. It ran through my veins, through my mother's veins. It ran before I took a first breath. And yes, it flowed before ships of shame ever set sail. It flowed before lands were claimed under the name of faceless monarchs. It flowed before this, then rich with the gift of life and culture. Flame-red warriors stood solid for their land. Back then, your blood flowed between hawthorn and oak, coated standing stones in the songs of our unsung spirits, circles in grass, circles in stone. In circles, we would dance wild-hearted, kelt fire on our heads, kelt fire in our hearts, kelt fire in our cups. Red fires bore our tools, handcrafted. Red fires bore our feasts, handcrafted. Red fires bore our songs and our stories, handcrafted and redrafted by every pair of lips which dare retell them. That, that is why they are called folk stories. Your blood rode bareback across chalk downs. 
It bled through heartbreaks and first dates. Your blood stood deep hooded on the moors with gray earth and gray grass and gray sky. Wind carved rocks surrounded us as we rambled where only the wild ponies had been. Your blood danced all night under the light of the moon. Celebrating the coming of the sun, spun stories, spun wool, spun round and round the maypole and splashed its face in the morning dew. Those fiddles played on, the tin whistles played on, this music plays on, still this music plays on. And still you will find your kind carrying the long lost culture of your past. Languages <gasps> rasping for their <gasps> last breath still stalk the corners of old country pubs. Those stones are still standing. Those fires are still burning. And whether it's Glastonbury Tor or Dartmoor, Stonehenge or Avebury, baby, my baby girl, when this world with its marks of troubled path and a stagnant scent of selfish acts that emanates from white man's tracks becomes too much for you to carry, know. Know that these places stand as testament to your depth. That you too, you too have a culture that was stepped upon by the feet of white man. And that you too are, from a, are a single spark from a roaring fire of life and culture. And that fire is still burning. And those stones, those stones are still standing. Thank you. The next feature is Anne M. Carson. Anne has been published in the USA, Ireland, France and widely in Australia. Her first collection, Removing the Kimono, was published by Hybrid Publishers in 2013. She has a particular interest in collaboration and has worked with the dancer, pianist, keyboard player and harpist. She has won and been commended in various literary competitions. Most recently in the 2015, she was shortlisted for the Ron Pretty Poetry Prize. So let's have a listen to Anne. Thanks everyone and thanks for coming out on such a cold, cold night. It's very cosy in here, very cosy and passionate and that's how we like it I think. Meditations on melancholy. You said melancholy, I said Chopin. A poultice you could put on pain. Dark notes held by beauty in a soft hand. Not cry your eyes out, slumped in blurs of despond. But clear-eyed chords, elegiac philosophy carried on rivers of soul. Comfort for the bloody business of loss. The carnage of having what is as close to you as your own limb lopped. The nocturnes lasso darkness with light, ever widening stories to which your tale belongs. The simple peace when pain is consented to. Silos of silence to sink into.
<laughs> okay, so what a beautiful piece of music. The nocturnes, if you haven't heard them, are just sublime all through. They're fantastic pieces of music. Um, and listening, listening is so important. Our culture, well, our mainstream culture privileges the visual and um, one of the things in my work is trying not just to concentrate on imagery and visual aspects of life but to bring the other elements, the other senses in. And this is a poem about that. It's called On Being Taken There. Anything can take you there. Today, it is the clip-clop percussion of horses' hooves as they strike bitumen. The sounds ring out resplendent, a melody the horse makes from the marriage between paston, cannon bones and ground. Not just the resonant clang of a metal striking metal, but all the grace of gallop and canter is there embryonic in the sound and its tattooed rhythm. The symphony which plays when horse gathers musculature and will to thunder across pasture, to flash equine into the world. You don't need to clap till the end, that's fine. Um, the next poem is called Axiology, and for those of you who don't know that word, it's, a, um, it's the study of values, and um, so this poem is called that. And there's another tricky word in the poem which I'm going to practice saying because I stumble over it every time, kintsukuroi, kintsukuroi, which will become clear when I read the poem, Axiology. If I was ceramic... I'd be kintsukuroi, pottery which has been knocked, dropped, broken into shards, then mended with gold or silver lacquer, a delicate meander of liquid gold flowing into the breach. Kintsukuroi, the word a whole world, evoking the kind of place where mending is valued more than the break where old is treasured more than new, where putting things back together is an art form, things more beautiful for having been broken. Thanks. My parents were both avid bird watchers and they bequeathed to me a love of all things avian and I noticed that again and again I turned to birds as imagery, trope, um, metaphor in my work and um, it seems like there's an endless number of entry points to, to discuss birds. This one's called Eula, The Return, and it's about the shearwaters, the mutton birds down at Phillip Island. You might have seen them down there. An extraordinary experience. A single dim shape shoots out of the dusk behind us, carrying deeper darkness on its wings, and the imprint of stars, snow, the never-ending night flight. More birds follow, leaves blown by a gale. They slip over the lip of the land, down the cliff face like children down a slide. The flock wheels over the water, patches of ink in the sky, clotting and dissolving like liquid stirred into watercolour. Intricate raw shark patterns emerge and retreat the curve of a blade, a bill. Uncanny quiet descends, closes us into a cone of silence with them. There are so many birds, their wing beats are palpable in the dark, a cauldron of movement above the bay. And the young, tucked into underground bunkers, defenceless, against encroaching night. Thousands of solitary chicks alone in the dark, 
hungry mouths open, calling, calling, calling. And here's another bird poem. Thanks. Two green parrots. Two green parrots wing across a granite sky. Grief and hope together again, as close as fingers on a hand, feathers on a wing. They don't fly straight as arrows do into a standing target. They are not ammunition fired out of the sky's dark mouth. They dip and rise, weaving sinew and delight into strands of effortless grace, calling as they go. What do humans know of the calls of birds? But it sounds like liquid pleasure. It sounds like they laugh and make merry against the backdrop of the approaching storm. Those were some more recent poems and now I'm going to read a few from Removing the Kimono. Which we have again. <laughs> Thank you. This one is a love poem for my late husband, spooning under the Milky Way, crowaging along National Park, Victoria. Your warmth presses my back, sands cold reassurance beneath. Restless wind tosses its questions. A shawl of stars drapes the shoulders of the sky. High overhead, pinprick lights mesmerise the dark. Held in a pod of pleasure and pain, poised in the whirling night, the two of us, present to the immensities, patient while they do their work, honing the human. So we too become vast, and all that is poultry in us, blown away. A quick word about some live poetry gigs in Melbourne. The Dan O'Connell Hotel Carlton has poetry on every Saturday afternoon and Passionate Tongues is at the Brunswick Hotel every second Monday night. Westward happens out at the Dancing Dog Cafe in Footscray twice a month on Sunday afternoons. Voices in the Attic is run fortnightly on Tuesday evenings at Ferdidirk, levels 1 and 2, 239 Lonsdale Street, and House of Bricks, on or near the last day of every month, run by our very own Santo Cassati, corner of Bud and Kill Streets in Collingwood. All these gigs have open mics if you'd like to try your hand at sharing your work with others, or you can just go to listen. Check out the website, melbournespokenword.com, to find out more about the scene. Next up is Gemma Hadeo. Gemma is a Melbourne-based writer who came to Australia in 1987. Prior to that, she lived in her country of birth, England, and also spent time in her mother's in the Philippines. Her poetry has appeared both online and in print at Famous Reporter, Islet, Poetrix, Cordite, Antithesis, and Going Down Swinging with more recent works appearing or forthcoming in Writ Poetry Review, Tincture Journal and Tenderness Journal later in 2015. So let's have a listen to Gemma. I scrubbed maniacally at the chocolate sauce thickness in the fabric. Hitchcock was right to see blood in Psycho. Its viscosity he may have found fitting. Hitchcock. I think the murder in the bathtub, coming out of the blue, you know, that was all about Truffaut. Oui, oui, c'est ça, c'est ça, c'est comme le viol. Hitchcock. Sure. But the stain and the guilt of it cannot be replicated. I scrub again. Daughter. Bring the screen. I'm dying, I'm dying, quickly. Strindberg's ghost sonata, girl's words repeat in my head constantly. 
as I crouch fetal-like in the shower, watching the red and clear liquids. Cook, you drain the goodness out of us and we drain it from you. We take blood and give you back the water with the colorites. We watch them dance down the plug hole. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, that's, um, not really, because I think it's, yeah, it's sort of, um, so that, that's got two excerpts. There's um, one from Hitchcock and Truffaut talking about Psycho, and the other one is bits and pieces from Michael Myers' translation of um, Strindberg's play, The Ghost Sonata. Okay, so this is called a sketch for a modern lost poem. It's um, one of those poems where you kind of don't give up on either because you're optimistic or just really, really stupid, but I do, it just, no one likes it, but as in I can't get it published, but okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and it's actually um, based on a sketch for a modern love poem by Tadeusz Rosowitz, who, and it was translated by Czeslav Milos. So yeah, sorry about that, so lots of people there. White is stark, grey, reassuring. A magpie charcoal esses on textured granite, summer in December. Old love poems describe inscribing flesh extols papyric virtues of minishi, eyelashes, teases unsated skin. Bread is tangible hunger. Rattle the pips of an apple core, carcass, cages, ripe solely for marriage to sentry eggs. A bird not yet born putrefies. Pomegranate molasses, plagiarized blood in vain, wasted organic chem texts. Water, transparent thirst. Absence made flesh, a description of love. This statistic seems high though, hypermodern lost a poem. Um, this one is a salute to the first Fridge poem ever by William Carlos Williams. It's not really, it's an apology. Um, basically, I stole some crap and no one else is going to get them, so... Oh, it's called Plum. Slivovitz, you susurrate, it already sounds alluring in your Eastern European accent, mandritchy to the tongue. I recall snatches of William's frozen plums, fairy tale plums dusted in sleet glazed sugar. You don't need to check the ice box. My blood-stained fingertips and plump mucous membranes will attest to the crime. Okay, um, this one's a list poem. I love lists. Um, I don't know if anyone else ever feels like that about lists. They just... Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's called Some Small Certainties. Um, I'm not going to read all of them, so um, if you're wondering why I've missed some numbers, it, I can count. Uh, one, no one will ever love you as much as I did. Two, in, the casino in one's capital city is not the ideal place to take tourists. Three, do not touch Black Knob. It is set and it is accurate. Four, you smell nice in your business shirt, lightly perspired. Five, I wear the deodorant purely for the well-being of others. Seven, yes, the Libertines have a black drummer. Block party has a black singer. Get over it. Nine, conjugating the French verb blessé is good consolation. Ten. You can't fuck someone a decade younger than you, but it's fine to fuck someone a decade older. Twelve. Someone must know where Lord Lucan went, surely. Thirteen. My ribs are visible again. I feel successful. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. 3CR Spoken Word is on every 
Thursday morning, 9 till 9.30, 8.55 on the AM dial and web streamed at www.3cr.org.au. We also do podcasts. So until next time, this is George O'Hara for 3CR Spoken Word. Thank you.